Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with a supply launch to the Lunar Gateway, as I have it, with a whole jumble of different modules. And the supply module is being launched on a Kasei rocket with four Sajita boosters. This is a rocket of my own design. The core has very large hydrogen oxygen engines, five of them, and the boosters each have five methane oxygen engines, which are smaller, obviously. And here go the boosters at the end of their burn. Nothing is reusable on this. It is just meant to loft heavy payloads to low Earth orbit. And it's pretty efficient for that. But uh, yeah, eventually I would like to design some reusability into it, but right now that is not the case. And so here I'm rearranging stages because we wanted to get rid of the fairings. Off go the fairings. And what we have in there is uh, another HTV derived uh, supply vessel. AJ-10190 is being the engines on it. That's the engine on the Orion service module. So we've got a combination of things here. And here the reignition for the lunar transfer. And this engine is just a larger version of the engine on the first stage, a vacuum version of that engine. And then we are on the AJ-10190s, which will handle all the business around the moon. And there's the moon looking very good. Uh, we approached on the fully daylit side of the moon there. And here doing further rendezvous burns close to the moon. And finally rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway pretty close to periapsis. I'm pretty low down in this case though, going up very quickly as you can see at the top there. And we had to remove an old supply module in order to make way for this and while I was removing that this drifted really close to the station so here I am trying to slow it down uh, as much as possible and we did avoid actually crashing into the station and here I'm rendezvousing the new supply vessel with the old one to just take fuel from the old one and make sure we don't waste that fuel it didn't need all that fuel in order to deorbit itself we did deorbit the old one though so that it could be disposed of, it'll crash into the lunar surface, and then finally the new one docks, full of food, water, and oxygen. So that will allow us to do more far-flung things while Lunar Gateway is just fine with its supplies. And so we turn first to Mars. And at Mars we have the Hammerhead, which is a return vessel, hopefully that will bring Kerbals back from our station around Phobos. CG Matt is one of our tourists. He wanted a trip over to Mars, and so that is why he is on board. And we are just making burns to get ourselves over to Phobos. This is already captured and everything. And once again, a nice fully lit view of Mars. I couldn't resist that shot. SSU Battle Smirineris right there. And there's Phobos. We are approaching it. Actually, uh, this video was pretty good for the interesting shots and not being in the dark all the time. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And this time we were lucky. So there's Phobos and we do make orbit around it and get over to the station. But of course, as with Lunar Gateway, we need to sort of free up a berth for this. And so we remove actually uh, our most OP item, which is a fusion engine. Uh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I was sort of moving it away so that we could deny its very existence. And here the hammerhead is coming into dock. It features perfectly normal ion engines, not anything OP at all. Though it does have a nuclear reactor to power the ion engines, but that's, you know, something that could be done. It is not fusion. I mean, fusion could in principle be done, we just haven't done it yet. Uh, this, however, we could theoretically do right now. So there it is, nice and docked. And we turn to a Mars supply vessel that went wayward. We missed out on its intended maneuver, and so we have to do a different maneuver in order to make sure it actually re-encounters Mars. It won't encounter Mars for a very long time, but we might as well not waste it. 
So as doing this burn in interplanetary space in order to get back over to Mars, since we missed its initial opportunity, I was probably busy with other things or forgot to put it in the alarm clock. And so there it has a new encounter, but it's not going to be for more than three years. So, yep, yeah, but again, best not to waste it. And then next up, we sort things out at our Phobos station. We have a lot of lag on here right now, and I decided it would be best if we got rid of some of that. And so we have a Kerbal EVA to do some destructing for us. And so out goes Kurovka. And Kurovka was a tourist, though I haven't seen him in a while. And so we put him to work. And we are going to explode some nuclear engines, because that's totally safe to do, right? Disassemble, yes. Disassembling nuclear engines. Obviously, something that's totally easy to do like this. And also that tank. I mean, that's the best we can do for now, and that docking port. We'll have to review the other parts. And that will potentially free up that spot so that we can dock something else to it, perhaps a docking hub. After that, we turn to our demo station, and we finally call it our demo station. That's what I'm here to do. Uh, I've been uh, Blitz's ship, and now we are going to change it officially to demo station. Nothing to explode here yet. It's not that big, but yeah. At least we've got an official demo station now. This was supposed to be a stockish lander for the moon. Not really. I mean, we've got a procedural tank there, but at least we're using the Mark 1-3 capsule. And it had a lot of boil off. We lost a lot of oxygen. You can see there's an imbalance between oxygen and methane in the upper right corner there. But we do have a methane oxygen tank available. And that's this. This is just a fuel depot. So I did the initial burn with the lander so that I can rendezvous with the fuel depot. But of course the fuel depot will do most of the burns. It's probably more efficient like that. And here it is doing one close to periapsis. And then finally rendezvousing with the lander. The lander does have its engine sort of clipped into the heat shield so that it could potentially burn on the heat shielded side. That's convenient for a lander. And here we are bringing the whole assembly to a lower orbit so that it can be ready for a landing. But we'll have to put Kerbals on board or otherwise test it without Kerbals. Here is a Ganymede mission. We have a Ganymede lander on one side and then the habitat, food, water and oxygen and then the ion engine complex. But it has a water recycler so you can see we only have 110 days of water remaining and it's more time than that to the node so we had to update the water supply make sure that the recycler was working otherwise they would run out of water so we stopped by there this was the Pluto mission with Cape Pollux and we are making sure that Pollux is well situated the recyclers are working he's got all sorts of recyclers on and I was checking how much Delta V would take to make orbit around Pluto and the answer is too much uh, 10,000. So Pollux, as Pollux wanted, uh, will be ejected out of the solar system. We will catch up with him next when he gets the Pluto encounter in a little over two years, it looks like. And so back to our Ganymede lander after checking on those far-flung missions. Uh, we do have its approach to Jupiter. And so there's the mission getting into the Jupiter system. But still a long way to periapsis. This is a totally different thing. This is a Uranus probe getting into the Uranus system, so another interplanetary SOI boundary crossing. And once it does that, we replot so that it can eventually meet up with Miranda, the moon of Uranus. And so a minor burn to correct to make sure that it is in a better inclination to meet up with Miranda. And I plot out its eventual encounter with Miranda, so testing out whether it has enough delta V and making sure that we have a good sense of what maneuvers will be necessary in order to make that happen. And so, yep, it's looking good for this probe, which will be able to scan for resources on the innermost moon of Uranus. And speaking of Uranus, here is Miko on his very, very long trip 
into that planet, not into that planet, but uh, into that planetary system. And Miko also wanted to go to Miranda. And we are replotting to make sure that he gets to the Uranus system faster. Because right now he's taking 2046 days still after all this time. And I cut that down with this maneuver to uh, under 1900 days. It's still a long time, but it's less. And it'll be much better considering the remaining food, water, and oxygen available. So 400 meters per second didn't seem much to spend in exchange for that. There is a separate return vessel from Uranus. That will get there, and Miko will be able to rendezvous with that. So Miko just needs to capture and then hopefully get to Miranda. This is Pekka and Sinan Toast Crunch again with the Ganymede lander. And they are finally at their periapsis around Jupiter and making orbit. So the ion engines are on right now. They're burning constantly as they pass by Jupiter. These ion engines do work during time warp, and we have captured. So no problems there very very close to Jupiter probably they are getting very irradiated this is not necessarily a good thing for them but anyway uh, we do have the Jupiter wet workshop and other missions around Jupiter that we will take a look at but that is not a good encounter with Ganymede you never want to be oblique like that so I replot that and we find something that's a little bit more tangential so it's not going to cost as much Delta V once we get to Ganymede. And that's the sequence of burns for this. Ah, uh, well, this is actually NB Silence, who is on the Jupiter station around Europa. And we are probably going to have NB Silence meet up with Pekka and Sinatos Crunch to facilitate NB Silence getting back from Jupiter after having done his stint. This is a supply vessel around Jupiter. So the plan is to get all these things together and then we will bring the three Kerbals who are currently around Jupiter back and make sure they have all the supplies they need to get back. The Ganymede lander mission needs the supplies more. Envy Sons seem to have enough supplies on the Jupiter station so I decided to send this supply vessel over to Ganymede and here it is trying to capture around Ganymede but... Yeah, that, that proved not so easy, and we'll have to go right past periapsis, continue burning. It's not very efficient, but you know, there's the downside to ion engines. They don't do things very quickly. And that escape, the thing is, you don't want the escape to be counting down, you want it to be counting up. I used a little bit of RCS to uh, prod it and then I was able to switch back to just ion engines during time warp and you can see it's counting up there so that means we will, as long as we can continue burning during that time, capture. So we certainly have more than 6-7 hours with burn time so eventually this will capture. Eventually. There we go. Uh, very awkward but at least it got done. Then the Ganymede lander itself had to get over to Ganymede and this is the orbit raising burn at Apoapsis in order to make that happen. And so that will lift our orbit from the low pass at Jupiter that we just saw up to Ganymede's orbit. And we're going to try and get that little pass there. But we're not going to be able to do the capture burn around Ganymede on this particular pass because we'll still have too much relative velocity and the ion engines just can't handle that even if we start early. So it'll be a first pass around Ganymede and it's got to cost 2,000 meters per second to capture eventually of which we will do a part this time. So here is the first Ganymede pass and it takes a while. We want to make absolutely sure that we are not going to crash into Ganymede with this. Uh, important to make sure the periapsis does not go too low and so we pass by and we go on escape and I replot to get another encounter with Ganymede and that was it for this pair of streams so with that and with this mission still on its way into Ganymede I will say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.